about millennials and for millennials. I am Mark Stewart, and it's the wee hours on February 10th, but February 9th, I'm just completing maybe the best day of campaigning in New Hampshire, and it's because of really in-depth, good conversations with adults and young adults. Very gratifying across the board. So two morning conversations about millennials. Um, one, an adult with disdain for millennials. Another, adult who recognizes that you can't characterize a whole generation. It's impossible. So segment within a generation. Are they selfish? Are they selfless? Are they productive? Are they not so productive? Yes, we seem to hear a lot of negativity about the younger generation, but I suspect that was true with every generation talking about its younger generation. I mean, in the 400 years of colonial and U.S. North America, what older generation ever said, the younger generation is better than us? Don't think so. So, when one looks at segments, one comes to better conclusion. And segments ought to be really, really minute because I don't think they fall into geography. I don't think they fall into an educated versus a less educated versus a highly educated set. I don't think they fall into a kind of profession. Within a profession, there are good, there are not so good. Now, the very good. Two conversations following my town meeting in northern New Hampshire with under 30 young men who are really impressive because they read and they think. And this opposes an awful lot of people who hear and don't think very deeply. And they end up following Bernie Sanders, the emotion leader. Bernie plays to our emotions. I don't think he fakes it, but his natural Marxism is a feel-good message. Feelings, not thinking. Adults and youngsters who follow Bernie are not getting deep enough. And it's unfortunate that media really doesn't press him enough about pie in the sky, impossibilities that he is throwing out there. Now, he's been consistent, and consistent in not, not backing up how it gets funded. It can't be done magically. There are an awful lot of people, young and old, who like the promised result, but don't question the means. These youngsters have and have come to the conclusion that not a single staged Democrat is able to fund their promises. They look at me and say, you're a Democrat who actually doesn't make big promises and you almost certainly can keep them. Well, I'm devoted to keeping them. If I let go, on a single promise that you hear from me between now and November, you call me on it. If I met you at a market, if I met you at a town hall, and I said I would do this, and upon election to any office, I'm running for governor in a couple of years, if I don't follow through, you say I met you at the market basket in Laconia, and you told me you would be doing this, and you're acting squirrely. I hope never to hear it. But if I'm doing this, you should call me on it. That is good democracy. Making only promises that you really are committed to keeping. It's unfortunate that most politicians get away with not keeping. And it becomes almost expectation. That's a fault of media. Because media knows promises and has the ability, because it's their job, to look back. Here's what this guy said. Here's what this guy hasn't done since election. Scorecards deserve to be kept and publicized. And the score of 
the U.S. Congress is pretty darn bad. I'll finish with the good. Millennials who actually vote are doing good. I hope you realize how few of those under 40 exercise their privilege of voting. It's the lowest percentage of any group. So it's no wonder that politicians on the campaign trail and elected and serving don't pay much attention to them. They pay attention instead to those who vote in high numbers. Who's that? Older people, okay? The 80 plus crowd who live politics, they watch news, they read papers, and yes, they vote in 80 plus percent ratios, unlike the under 40 crowd that votes in about 21 percent ratios. So it's no wonder the squeaky wheel gets the grease. It's been true for millennia. And now you're going to see once again a Congress that gets elected primarily by older people and once again stiffing younger people. I have more to say about exactly how the millennium the millennial generation is being stiffed and it will continue until you uh, vote in people who have the interests of the young. I'm not that young, but I have the interests of people who are 25 and under because right now they're on a course to not be able to be Americans and afford it. We don't want that to happen. It takes a youthful movement coalescing on an issue, not necessarily candidate, but an issue to stop the deficit spending, to stop the kind of care programs that rip you off. Please tune in more, stewartforliberty.com. From the northern headquarters in the White Mountains, I'm Mark Stewart Greenstein. See you tomorrow.